Now you have to go in, you know what? I am learning how to love this body. I like where I am. I love where I live. And you have to absolutely be grateful for the circumstance you're in before anything, before you have that ability to change anything. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello there and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky. I am your host. Now, I was just reflecting a little earlier about how quickly the year has gone by. There's been so much happening on the show, so many wonderful things, so many great guests. And uh, with that being said, on today's call, I'm with the wonderful Connie Ponturo. Welcome to the show, Connie. Thank you so much, Rick. Such a pleasure. Absolute pleasure to have you here, especially after I've uh, gone through your bio and checked out your website and all the wonderful work you're doing. So where are you calling in from today, Connie? Los Angeles. Oh, beautiful. Having been to Los Angeles, I love it there. So what's uh, what's the most favorite part about living there for you? Um, you know, I think the inside outside living um, where I live, I'm in the valley, so we get some some weather and so for us it's cool and so it's it's nice i just i love to be outdoors i love to garden yeah um and so you know it's the best of everything yeah absolutely now you do a lot of different activities tell us a little bit about to i guess your pastime what you actually like to do when you're relaxing personally yeah when i'm relaxing i love hiking i love being outdoors for me being outside is so nurturing and so fulfilling and i love to garden um, and, uh, you know, it's just the, the light, the light draws me and, and, you know, every morning I get up and I do a walk, you know, just to kind of clear my head, whether I'm listening to music or a podcast or, or whatever. And I, uh, being outdoors really fills my soul. Yeah, absolutely. I find that when I'm out watering the garden, I'm, I'm just at one, I don't have to think about yeah. anything. I'm just there in the moment. Do you find yourself feeling like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's our greatest connection with spirit is being outside and just seeing. And as you said, just watering and it lets your mind, you can just let your mind wander and dream. Yeah, absolutely. We don't seem to allow ourselves to no. relax and just be at one with ourselves nowadays. And I know that that's pretty important to your work. And we'll talk about that in a little moment. But before we do that, do you do you enjoy um, going out with friends? What's, what other hobbies do you have? Do you like movies? What's your thing? Oh, I love movies. I love movies. <laughs> started to go back to the movie theater. Yes. Uh, and so that's been really fun. I love hanging out with friends, love community, I have a pretty strong commun community of women friends. Yes. Um, and um, what else? I love to cook. Oh, very nice. What's your favorite? I love to cook Italian food. Oh, um, I love to eat Italian food. How's see, that? there you go. Good <laughs> connection here. But for, me, but for me, cooking is really relaxing. Yeah. Going through the process, looking for recipes, trying things, having a glass of wine and, and cooking. And it just, it, it calms me down and it's just fun. And it's fun to feed people. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, have people that you love around you. That's, there's nothing better, is there? Especially coming in, into the festive season at the moment. Do you have much planned coming up uh, for the no, year? No, well, my, my, my daughter lives in New York, so she came home. Oh, She's wonderful. here, my son is here. And so we're going to be cooking and and having fun and friends are coming over. So it'll be very small, but really lovely. I love this time of year. It's always been very special to me. Um, and I love planning the excitement for the new year. Yes, absolutely. You must have some uh, some pretty major plans coming up because I know you've authored a book and we're gonna be talking about that. And uh, you know, you've obviously got your coaching and um, so I'm sure you've got some plans underway. Would I be right? You would be right. <laughs> I want to start my new year in november right you know i start to have my my plan set up and i i've tried to i do all these videos but i try to get people to stop thinking about january 1st as the their new year ah, and yes. they start to do in december you know just to start to move a little bit more and start to put a little bit more of that thoughtfulness into how they want to feel in their bodies and how they want to live before january 1st you know when all the gyms get Yep. get filled for that one month you yep. know two months and then everyone disappears it's sad isn't it 
Right. Yeah. And so I try to get people to think of everything as doing uh, small steps. So it's not overwhelming. It's not like you're going from zero to 100. So now you're going to ha- enjoy the holidays and then you're going to starve yourself January 2nd. Yep. Right. Uh, and, and or or go to the gym five hours a day. I said, that's not that's not sustainable. And that doesn't seem fun in any way. No, not at all. <laughs> right? no. So we're, we're meant to live a life that's joyful and that's fun. So how can you put that into your life right now and, and start to to live a fulfilled life and not make yourself too crazy? Yeah. And take take life too seriously, because I hear that none of us get out alive. Exactly. <laughs> There's only one way out yeah right? absolutely absolutely now tell and, me in in yeah. your uh, i always do a thing do um things a little bit differently on the show because it's one thing to own a business and have wonderful gifts to share with everybody but going back into our formative years i always like to dig a little bit deeper to um see what um happened in your life in your early years that helped to form the person that you you've become today so did you have a, a, a wonderful upbringing what where did you live as a child and can you share something positive about your upbringing sure um, I grew up in Long Island outside of New York mm-hmm. um, and I did I was the youngest uh, three older brothers oh. um, <laughs> and so there you go, there you go. Um, that's, it. <laughs> that's where my grit and tenacity came from. Um, but I was a dancer from the age of four and uh, that was really all I lived and breathed. I mean, I that's really was my um, my life. I had a lovely growing up, very middle class, and I really wanted to get out of Long Island and move to New York, which is what I did. Um, I got into the school of my dreams, which was New York University's Tisch School of the Arts um, as a dance major. And yep. so I went off and, and did that. And um Unfortunately, that's where things started to change for me a little bit. I started to be in pain, which is why I work with people in chronic pain, because I I understand that. And I started to be in pain and ignored it because, you know, I was, what, 17, 18, you know. Doesn't matter, no. Doesn't really matter. (laughs) And, you know, you'll get through it and you're a dancer and you dance eight hours a day. So that doesn't really phase you. No. Until it kind of, you know, I was barely walking and finally one of my professors pulled me aside and said, listen, I don't know what's going on, but you have got to see a doctor right now. And so I did. And I um, found out that I had osteoarthritis in my toes and that dancing really was not going to be my profession. And, um, you know, after the heartbreak of that and after the loss of that future, which was really all I ever dreamed of. It kind of sent me off in different directions of finding who I wanted to be and who, you know, how could I still have those talents and just be different and yep. obviously be a dancer. And so it really left led me on a, an exploration of um, self health and fulfillment and uh, what was what were my gifts. And so, honestly, it was the best thing that could have happened. Could have happened, absolutely. Thank you very much yeah. for sharing. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if we can just fast forward and then we rewind and fast forward just so we can piece yeah. it all together. Now, um, today, what's your, what's your uh, uh, I guess, your pain threshold like and what does a daily routine look like for you? You know, I'm very lucky because I have kind of, my pain threshold is pretty high. Mm. Um, I make sure I walk every day. And um, I I do tell people that, unfortunately, that's the deal with arthritis pretty much of any kind. It feels like it's it's painful. But the thing is, the more you walk, the better you feel. The more you move, the better you feel. And, and, And that's the problem with pain. People are like, oh, no, I'm in pain. And so sometimes we have to lean into it a little bit more and we have to embrace it. And um, I'm very, very lucky. I'm very active. Um, and so I just maintain my movement as okay. much as possible and stretch and strengthen and do all those things. All those things. Personally, I have to do, but I'm very, very lucky. Thank you again. Now, I know that um, in today's world, we, uh, many of us, I'm not saying all of us, but many of us live very sedentary lives. And we've touched on this importance of the movement of body. How important is it actually for us as human beings to move the body that we're living in? Oh, my gosh. These bodies were meant to move. End Mm. of story. End of story. What anyone else tells you, it really, it's longevity. 
It will uh, keep you from uh, push off any diseases that come your way by movement. I mean, movement is a necessity. They have now put uh, sitting up with the same uh, level as, as smoking. Oh, wow, terms really? Of, of our health, yeah. Mm. And, and so that's the thing we don't realize. And I understand people are like, no, no, you don't understand. And I'm like, I do understand. But you do. I work with, you know, <laughs> writers. I work with doctors. I work with people that sit all day long. And if I can get them to move, get up from their desk for five minutes every hour, everyone can be moving. That's doable. And, that's and, doable. and when people say it's not doable, I'm like, you only get one body. Yep. And we treat our cars far better than we do, we do our bodies. ourselves. Yes, so true. Um, and so, you know, there's no, there is no excuse. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, everyone can do this. Everyone must do this. And, and, and I don't mean three to four hours. I mean, 15 to 20 minutes a day. Nothing I mean, getting intense. out for a walk. Yeah. I mean, getting out for a walk and then doing some mobility flexibility. So, as we get older, we need to work on our flexibility, our mobility, our balance, and our strength. Yep. It's it. easy. It's easy to do. And that's why I've done these videos, uh, especially starting, you know, in the pandemic. I have like over 900 you videos. You have hundreds and hundreds of them. I was yeah. going to ask you about that. Yeah. Clearly, it's a, a yeah. medium that helps you share your message. And we're so blessed yeah. to have that technology, aren't we? Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I saw here at the end of your bio, you say, when we truly investigate the connection between our thoughts, beliefs, and lifestyle patterns, we find that we can gain deeper insights into optimizing our freedom to move and live pain-free. Clearly, this then connects into the mindset. And my question that comes from that, Connie, is um, I get lazy. I feel lazy. I don't want to do anything. I just can't be bothered. I've got two young kids. How do you counter that, given the fact that we've got to get out of that chair and do it? Yeah, I mean, I think it it is... You know, we need to figure out, let's just use you specifically, <laughs> what's going to be your best, by the end of, by the end of the day is not when you need to be moving. By the right. end of the day, you're tired. Yep. You've got kids that want your attention, that want to play with you and run around. So that's not when, that's not your optimal time. Yep. So we have to find what's an optimal time in your life schedule. Is it waking up 30 minutes earlier and you go, oh Yeah. So 30 minutes earlier, you get up, you have, you make yourself have a big glass of water or two, have a cup of tea, coffee, and you um, take, sit for five minutes and just sit in silence. Don't look at your phone. Nothing. Don't open emails. It's really how you're going to plan out your day. And you're going to just breathe into the silence. Um, if you meditate, that's great. If you don't meditate, all you have to do is just breathe and just notice what's around you. Notice the joy around you, what you have. And then from there, we're going to get you out moving. We're going to get you out walking. We're going to get you to the gym. We're going to whatever for 20 to 30 minutes, get you moving and have that be the prime time for you. Yeah. But we definitely have to, if you're waiting for motivation, motivation will never find you. No, that's sage insight, isn't it? Right? You can't sit here and go, okay, I'm waiting to be motivated. I really am tired. You're never going to get yourself out of that. So how can I plan my day so I can leap into that motivation? Absolutely. And, and, I love it. and, and here's the thing. It's not even motivation or willpower. Forget that. It is how do you want to live your life? What's in your, how do you want your family life to be? How do you want your work life? How do you want your body to feel? How do you want these different places? And you have to see what you want to do. How do you want to feel? Do you think that, can I just jump in if you don't mind, yeah. Connie? I, yeah. uh, given what you're saying, I, I think about gratitude. How important is it for us to just reflect internally and say, you know what? I don't have much, but what I have, I'm thankful for. And I find that that sometimes helps me. Is that is that the- A hundred percent, a hundred percent. See, you have to be thankful for the body that you have now. You have to be thankful for the home you have now. For the life that you have now before yep. you can get anything greater it's not like i wish i had you know people come to me and they go i said you cannot change anything you hate you can't hate your life you can't hate your your body you can't hate your family you can't hate hate where you live and get a different result you will <laughs> that will never happen right so now you have to go in you know what i am learning how to love this body I like where I am. I, I love where I live. And you have to absolutely be grateful for the circumstance you're in before anything, before you have that ability to change anything. 
the locus of control comes to mind and you know a lot of times our inner game our inner dialogue um, seems to be you know that little friend on your shoulder that you you wish you could slap upside the head sometimes and tell them to be quiet how do you manage you know to keep that uh, I guess the little devil inside quiet when you got to get I, up but oh, I don't want to all that sort of stuff I think it's so e listen as human beings we are wired biologically yep. to have the negative bias that's, that's, we are that's always it. looking for danger, right? That's in our DNA. We're always looking for danger and we are wired for the negative. But my thing is, nope. I mean, people all day long. So I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too stupid. I can't do it. I hate my hair. I hate my blah, 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 you know, on and on. I'm like, nope, it's, it's not acceptable anymore. We, we're too smart for that. You have to wake up and go, yeah, I like that. I like, I like what I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get better at this. I'm willing to learn how to get better. If, if, if you can't say, I love you to the mirror, if you can't say, I love myself, then you can maybe lean into, I'm learning how to love you. Yeah. I'm learning how to be better at this. Um, you know what I mean? Hey, listen, three years ago, before the pandemic, I was no big whiz at making videos and Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the nature of that, I was when my studio, when my physical, my brick and mortar studio had to shut down, I was like, there is no way I'm just going to, this is okay. I have to do something. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And I said, I, you know, what? I'm going to just send out videos to my clients, whoever signs up um, to do these daily videos, just little things And the world. My thing is the world is your gym. We yep. get so focused on. You know, I, I, I have to digress to go back. Absolutely. And something for you, Rick, is <laughs> the better you are in your body, the better you are for your kids. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right? And the better you are for your partner and the better you are for your life and the better you are for your business. Mm -hmm. And so that can kind of make us, sometimes we have to back into fitness if people say, oh, I'm too tired, I don't have time. And I'm like, then you're not making it enough fun. So fun, easy easy to do. What can you do in your house? And so all of a sudden, you know, nobody could get weights. There was nothing. And I was like, okay, so I'm do working out with water bottles <laughs> and do I it. <laughs> doing this yeah, yeah. and I have people just holding that for five minutes. And all of a sudden you're like, are you using your muscle? Of course you are. Yes. And so it just is a different way to think. How can we think differently? Um, but gratitude, joy, the moments leaning into joy, because a lot of times um, I get people to wake up and do a joy journal and just notice the five, six things around you that bring you joy. Your first cup of coffee or tea, looking at your the home you're in, looking outside and joy really moves you into gratitude. And with that filling you up, all of a sudden the lens of the world is a little just bit changes, different. doesn't it? Yeah, the, totally the, the rose colored glasses come on. Now it makes me think about other important elements of our lives, which are relationships. You touched on my, my kids and your yeah. my partner. How important is it to be around people that really support you in this respect? Because I know personally the impact, the negative impact narcissistic type of people can have on your belief systems and that I didn't even recognize it for many years. How do you right. know that the people that you're hanging around are the right people to be around given what it's we've like, talked about? How, how do you feel inside? Yeah. When you leave someone and you feel like filled up and excited and like great, that's a person you want to be around. And when yeah. you walk away with somebody and you feel depleted, that person is really using your energy. So yeah. what do they say? You're, you're, uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. what's the word I'm trying to say? You're a part of the five people you hang out, how, yep. out with. Yep. Um, and so you want to hang out with people that lift you, that are smarter than you, that are uh, more advanced than you, make more money than you. So you, you can really lift yourself up. People should make you feel good. They should uh, support you and love you and say, Rick, you're doing an, an amazing job with your podcast and everything you do in the world. And you walk away and you go, yeah, I feel really good because then you want to help someone else. Absolutely. And it, it just, it's just, you know, all in kind. We have to be kinder to each other and kinder to ourselves. There's certainly some things for, for everybody to take away on this call. If you're listening in, um, stick around because there's certainly a lot more to come now. Tell me a little bit. What do you think your one superpower is, the thing you do the best, Connie? Ooh, I, my ability to see people and see how their bodies move um, and see their dysfunction of movement has always been my superpower, even when I was a five-year-old. 
Yeah, fantastic. Uh huh. Now, when I, I look at our kids and they're growing up so quickly, they used to be what makes uh, life worthwhile for me. But my, my uh, you know, what I value and what I, um, you know, see as making worthwhile has changed. What mm -hmm. makes life worthwhile for you at the moment? Oh, wow. That's such a great question. Well, first of all, you got to love what you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I think just being on this planet, I'm lucky every day that I get to wake up and be yeah. here another day. I, I get to share my gifts with my clients and um, people from around the world and uh, my family. I have two wonderful kids. They're grown. Yep. Um, and um, my husband, my partner, who's outstanding. I mean, I just, the people I'm around, I just, every day I am, I am blessed to be here. Yeah, I often say, and I said at the, the, at the start of the call, I've got two feet and a heartbeat. We can't really complain too much, can we? Now, yes. tell me, um, where did the, the wonderful name Absolutely Grounded come from? Ah, the name of my studio is called Absolute Pilates Upstairs, mm -hmm. because I'm upstairs. And during the pandemic, I was like, God, how can I make people be more grounded? And all of a sudden I went, oh, my God, absolutely grounded. Simple. Simple. And then... <laughs> Because that's what I want people to do. I mean, I do work with people on their mindset. I do meditation and breath work. And so to be grounded to me feels once you're grounded to the earth and you're grounded to your life, you can soar in so many different ways. Did um, You talked about your professor saying, hey, look, you've got this issue. You need to go see someone. What was the genesis of, genesis of the work that you're doing now? Was it somebody tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, look, you really need to do this? Or was it one of those uh, uh, epiphanies that you had that you needed to do it? You know, I think it was more an epiphany. Um, I was a mom at the time. I had, um, I had two kids. My daughter was, I think, about a year or two years. And I just knew there was something greater for me to do. Um, and so it was my husband who got me involved in uh. And he was the one who said, hey, gosh, I've heard about this Pilates stuff. And it sounds like everything you've ever done, because I've also became a massage therapist. Yep. And he said, I, I, I feel that that's something you should look into. And I did. And I really found home. How's, how is that different uh, than yoga? I don't really understand what Pilates is. You know, Pilates is a series of exercises that Joseph Pilates developed. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're, their, their core strength overall body so it's an overall body workout they started off as mat exercises on the floor and then he created equipment and now they're on the equipment or on the floor um and it is a little bit different those are the same kind of mind body spirit exercise meaning you are thoughtful in your movement right. um yoga is again very similar but you go into a position and you hold it you breathe then you come um, out of it into another. So they're they're similar but dissimilar yeah. in, in many ways. Um, what Pilates is great at is working with posture. And, and what, what's so great is I could work with a, a, tri a triathlete and I could work with someone who's never worked out a day in their life. And they'll do similar but different challenging something for the athlete. And then for someone who's never worked out, challenging them at their level. So at you can level. really mix it up. And um, I personally work with people in chronic pain um, who are older, usually 50 plus, because um, I love I love the challenge and I see the possibilities. I mean, that's I think what a good mentor does for anyone is see the possibilities before you can even see them. What a beautiful spectrum to be able to work on beginning yeah. through, through to advance. Now, let's shift gears a little bit because I want to talk about your uh, work uh, as a speaker. Now, something that really caught my eye is that you've been on stage with the likes of Charlie Sheen and Christy Brinkley and along with many other well-known personalities. How did this all come about for you? Um, you know, I started to work with, with people who, and I had a chance to go on stages and the opportunities just presented themselves. And I think as a speaker, well, for me, I always try to say yes. Yeah, I love right? it. And I'm like, would you like to? Yes, of yes, course. yes, of course, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> And, and so that has been absolutely a thrill for me to be able to speak on stage. And it has evolved. I mean, during the pandemic, I was doing more, you know, obviously virtual kinds of things yeah, um, yeah. and just have gone back to being more in person. But it's fun. It's great. It's great. I love Zoom, obviously. I love working um, with people virtually and speaking that way. But mm -hmm. to be in an audience and to get people excited and 
and to have them see how simple it can be for them to change their lives and that we as human beings make things way, way too way difficult. Too yeah. Right? It's yeah, kind of fun and challenging and it's a blast. Yeah, and you get to bring a certain level of energy. I can even feel it through Zoom and I know how sterile Zoom can be. So <laughs> it's a real credit to you. Now tell me a little bit about your three M's, movement, mindset, and motivation. Where'd you come up with the three M's from? You know, I was just trying to think of something. What could be, you know, I like movement, I like mindset, because we want our bodies moving, but we yep. really want to change the words that we say, because the words that we say have such power, and you probably heard this before, but the issue gets stuck in your tissue. And so when you are unkind to yourself, when you are speaking and being so mean to your body, it gets stuck in your body, it gets stuck yep. in your tissue, it gets stuck in your cells. And so by changing that, those words, by moving, and then by meditating, it's really the quiet space where we sit back into our true nature. Now, do you meditate at all, Rick? Yeah, absolutely. Every time I, I have a daily routine. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you see when you don't do it, how much you miss it. Oh, yeah. It feel, yeah. makes the whole day feel different, like in makes not a great way. Makes the whole day feel different. And that's right. That's why I try to get people to, you know, I, I try to explain meditation this way. When people say, I can't meditate, I can't meditate, I can't stop my mind. And I always say, you will never stop your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind is not meant to be stopped. That's not its job. So don't worry about that. And then also think of your mind like a puppy. When you're training a little puppy, do you scream at it? No, you're like, come here, little puppy. Come on, sit, sit, sit. Good. And the puppy goes off and you bring it back and it goes off and you bring it back. That's your mind. Your mind is a puppy. That's it. When you think of it like a puppy, you're like, oh, there it goes. Oh, bring it back. <laughs> Forget there it goes. <laughs> bring it back, right? <laughs> and so whatever we do in the day, it's like, okay, it's okay. Okay. Because then I can just drop back into the quiet spaces that I can find. If I'm just doing my breath. Uh, people just focus on their breath and that brings them back to being present. And I think for all of us, I know myself included, we all need more presence because it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter what's going to happen 10 minutes from now. But what's happening now is my ability to come and be here with you and have a conversation and really be here and not worry about what my laundry list of stuff is to do. And in every interaction, can you really be there? In your job, can you really be there? With your family, can you really be there? With your kids, with your, can we really be there? I think that is the challenge and that is the payoff. Absolutely great feedback. Thanks so very much, Connie. Now, um, we've we've talked about some pretty intense things and life in general can be intense for a, a multitude of reasons for different people in different stages of their life. And I always try to come back to um, the sense of humor. How important is it for us to laugh at ourselves and not take life so seriously? Oh, think? like like 100 percent. Mm. You know, I really feel that my my first book was called jo Falling into Joy eight simple steps to allow your body to become your best friend. Mm -hmm. And it's in those moments of joy and fun that we really feel like life is good. And it doesn't have to be, you know, joy and fun it doesn't have to be big, giant things. It can be the little moments of talking with someone in the grocery store and, you know, complimenting them on the color they're wearing or just bumping into somebody and laughing, saying, excuse me, and not being <laughs> so threatened, like, oh, yeah, what is you know, always on guard. Just Not being, looking for a fight. Exactly. Just kind of taking a little bit of the edge off and enjoying it. It's like we make things way too difficult. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit more about your latest book called Listen, Watch What You Say, Your Body Is Listening. What a great title. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's really about the way our body is always talking to us. So you've had an incident, I'm sure, at some point where you had some pain and something oh, yeah. happened, right and you <laughs> ignored it and then it got worse and you ignored it and then finally something happened that you had to go see and take care of it whether it's emotional pain or physical pain it's the same thing yeah. life throws you a pebble you don't get that it throws you a bigger rock throws you a brick yep. it throws you a boulder and then you hit the brick wall and a lot of people only get it when they hit the brick wall and oftentimes a bit too late, isn't it? And it's a bit too late. And so I'm always like leaning into that whisper 
what's my body saying? And here's the thing. Your mind is always going to say, play tricks with you. Uh, but your body is not like that. Your body is not, doesn't fake you out. I mean, if you work out too much or you overdo it, you're like, oh, my back hurts. Oh, yeah, I was gardening. Mm-hmm. Um, and, so, and so your body is always trying to get you to notice. Honestly, sitting too long, you're like, oh, I have to stand up. I have to get up, yeah. Going on a long, you know, flight, on a, you know, airline flight, all of a sudden you have to move your body. Your body is talking to you. So it's really about the ways our body talks to us and how you can become a better listener. Tips and tricks to get you to move your body and start to listen. It's very relevant given our topic today. So if anybody's on the call, they're looking to get that book, certainly reach out to Connie in the um, connections, the links that we're just about to provide for you. Now, you also have a masterclass of the same name. Tell us a little bit about that. I do. So after I wrote the book, I just came out with it um, a couple months ago. And so it is a 10-week course based on the book. And it's me. You can either buy it just on its own. 10 weeks with exercises to do and there are are, there's links videos and stuff so there are physical exercises and then writing exercises i have a lot of journaling um or you can join me in group coaching and i do it on zoom um in a group uh, situation but it's yeah it's kind of taking the book and really kind of amping it up a little bit is that where people can access you is on your website to get to that master class and if so what else is on the uh, on the website that people can find i know you've got a ton of videos you know and i have a new app coming out oh and good. i'll give you the the link for that because i have a lot of free i have all my free videos and as i said i've made a lot of them and so we categorize them into years and then categorize broke them down again into months and yeah. that's all my free stuff and i send a lot of people to that so that's all on the app and then um, debunking um, exercise myths is another free part. And then you can buy classes with me. You can buy my master class. Um, there's my website. And then, but this is also my app, which will be in the app stores very shortly. But I can also give you a link for that too. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Look, this has been a wonderful call. Tell me a little bit about um, uh, the domain that people will need to go and where else they can connect with you. Uh, definitely on Instagram, uh, Connie Pontero on Facebook. Connie Brunner, Pontero, LinkedIn, I am on, um, and YouTube. I have a YouTube station, Absolutely Grounded. No surprises there. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, and your website, if I'm I'm correct, is absolutelygrounded.com. That's it. Thank you very much. Now, if you're on this call and you want to reach out, certainly make sure that you click the links below the post. Um, No matter where you're going to see this post, you will certainly find the links back to Connie and all of her wonderful work. And with all that being said, Connie, Great call. Thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.